Hey friends, welcome to Social Videos. My name is Joan and today I'm going to be talking about how to aesthetically customize your whole Apple ecosystem. So typically I'm just going to be talking about the MacBook and the iPhone as those are what I mostly use as a university student. So I know it was a really big trend, I think maybe a few years ago, quarantine season, where everyone was figuring out how to customize how apps looked on the iPhone. So there was a whole thing with the Shortcuts app and I think right now it's gotten a lot more easier to set up. But that stuff we already know, we're already past that. It's been years. Other than just simply changing what your wallpaper is or changing your phone icons and app icons, Icons. I've got some other ways to aesthetically and creatively customize your Apple products to the point where other people are gonna be asking you how you customize your stuff. I specifically want to talk about how I've been customizing my laptop and my phone to make them aesthetically cuter and also a little bit more bearable to look at. And since this is the social channel, after all, we gotta find a way to creatively do it. So I'm gonna be talking about a few ways I've aesthetically customized my laptop and phone. Timestamps will be down below if you're looking for a specific thing. To give a quick rundown, I'll be talking about how to create creatively customize your laptop and phone wallpapers, how to customize laptop icons, the efficiency of using widgets, and tips on how to do all of these things your way and the best way throughout the whole video. With that, let's start talking about backgrounds and wallpapers. So first I'll be talking about how to make your own aesthetic wallpaper for your phone, specifically showing the one that I made that you can dynamically change the photos that pop up on it. So first major tip of not even making but just having a good phone wallpaper is to make sure you have the proper resolution. So make sure to check that first before you get started on making your own. Now the second tip is what really helped me make a really nice aesthetic wallpaper and it's to create your very own color palette that you enjoy. This website is my go-to for doing that and again not an ad but I just again truly use it and really do like it. It's awesome because you're able to lock in colors and it just kind of randomly generates it based on the colors you already have just by pressing your space bar and you're able to order it around just so you can see what the gradients kind of look like and the colors side by side and even better if you're like me and you don't know where to start, they have trending color palettes you can look through and use as a reference, especially if you want to change some of the colors on there. I've actually made my own color palette that's really big, but I wanted a variety of colors that look good together and now I use it for anything I customize. So to get started on making my own phone background, using whatever drawing app you prefer, just make sure to make your canvas in the resolution that you wanted. And then I'm just gonna upload my color palette that I generated and just save all of the colors I have so I can use it while I'm drawing drawing and coloring in my own background. So for me, I really like having photos as part of my background, but I kind of wanted to do like my own drawing DIY style to it. So what I'm basically gonna do is draw up a Polaroid picture, which is going to hold all of the photos that I can tap through. And I really wanted to add some kind of cute little sketch concept. So I wanted to add in a little duck, which actually matches the aesthetic and wallpaper I have for my MacBook too. So after finishing the drawing portion, I selected the photos I wanted to have. And if you're doing a tap background like me where you just want the photos to change in the photo but the rest of the drawn background to stay the same, I just took all of my photos and fit them within this kind of sketched frame that I made for the Polaroid photo. That way each of the photos will just fit within that same frame and tapping through will look pretty cool because it's pretty seamless. So again, I chose several photos, again, fitting them and erasing the border so they all fit within the same drawn background, as we can see here. And now it's time to actually set it up. So going to wallpaper in my settings, I'm gonna make a new wallpaper that's gonna be a photo shuffle. I'm gonna change the frequency to be on tap, and then it'll prompt me to choose the photos I want. And now comes what could be a tricky part, which is just resizing your photos. If you want everything to look really seamless and just have the photos in the Polaroid be changing, everything needs to be sized and placed exactly the same. But for me, I just zoomed everything out and then it just so happened to line up pretty nicely. I didn't want to add any widgets, but if you wanted to for your lock screen, you could. But with that, you're basically done setting up and making your phone wallpaper. Okay, this is so weird because I'm filming with my iPad so I can actually show you guys what's going on with my phone. I've set my wallpaper as the one as the sign with the photos. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, cute. So yeah, I put it basically every time on tap. It changes the photo in the drawn Polaroid. That is so cute and the little goose is holding it. Ah! Okay, tell me this is not a unique way to showcase all the photos that you want for your wallpaper in like, I don't know, a more creative, unique form. I like literally can't stop doing this. This is so cool. Ah! Okay, next I wanna talk about how to make a really cute laptop background. Ah! Not only did I draw this myself, 
but it changes depending on what time of day it is. It is a dynamic wallpaper. Now let me show you how I made it. So for the dynamic wallpaper I made for myself, I made four different scenes of the same kind of hillside. And depending on the time of day, it changes to more of a sunrise, daytime, sunset, and nighttime scenery. I only made four different types of scenes, but I've also seen dynamic wallpapers that have more than four. So feel free to do that if that's what you want to. So to start off, I just made kind of my first reference drawing, thinking kind of about what my default wallpaper would be during the day. And once you make that first reference drawing, my tip to make sure that all your wallpapers are cohesive is to just base the rest of the wallpapers off of your reference first drawing. For all my other wallpapers, I duplicated my original drawing, except I changed some of the colors and details to match the time of day that the wallpaper was supposed to appear at. I also used the color palette generator I showed for the phone wallpapers to pre-make a color palette that I used for all of my different scenes to make sure that everything matched. Now it's onto the dynamic wallpaper website. Now what's cool about this is if you're too lazy to make your own, you can actually just get dynamic wallpapers straight from their site. And it's really awesome to see some of the really pretty wallpapers that are there and you can preview what they look like at certain times of the day. They've got a wide selection of different types of wallpapers from more generic ones, scenic looking ones to even ones that are themed. Also this sounds like an ad but I swear it's not, I just really love this website. <laughs> My favorite part of the website is the fact that you can make your own dynamic wallpaper with it. They've got a how-to and an FAQ page, which is super helpful. But quickly, just to show you guys, I'm just going to select the images I will be using for my dynamic wallpaper. And you can check the preview to see how all of them look together. And also make sure to check the resolution of your wallpapers to see if it's compatible with your computer. And then you're on to the step of assigning your wallpapers what time of day you want them to change at. Now feel free to get flexible here. I just personally chose times that I would at least be awake for to see all the different wallpapers and I of course put what made sense. Once you finish that you can submit your wallpaper and once it gets processed and approved which is pretty fast from what I remember you have your very own dynamic wallpaper. Now all that's left is to download it and actually put it onto your background. So again, they have their own how-to page that's super helpful, but all you really do is just take the downloaded file, put it onto your wallpaper, and making sure it's on the dynamic mode and it should change when it's supposed to. As you can see here, when I put in just a normal photo, it just has the photo itself, but when I put in the dynamic one, it actually changes to the time it is right now. With that, you're ready to make your very own aesthetic dynamic wallpaper. I'm not an artist, so it's pretty just simple, but I think it's still pretty cute. And it's just cool to make one yourself that you want to customize. Because I, for the life of me, I just wanted kind of like a cartoonish background with colors that I really wanted. And a bit of a cute little goose theme. And while Dynamic Wallpaper has their own library of stuff, it doesn't have exactly what I want. So why not just make exactly what I was looking for? We got the aesthetic colors. We got the little goose. We also have the matching folder icons oh my gosh because i always found it really bothersome that you can't change the color of macbook laptop folders like they're always the same blue and then i learned not only can you change it by changing the image of the icons you don't have to have it a folder image you can have it literally any image so if you're gonna make a cute background why not make cute icons that match with your background for the folders and stuff on your desktop. Look at these icons I made. It's all goose themed. Here's normal goose, gluttony goose, angry goose, scholar goose, <laughs> and sleepy goose. <laughs> They're so cute. I also didn't know this, but my drawing app has a time lapse of me drawing in. Goose. I tried to use the same template as normal goose and then copied it and then redid a drawing on top. So again, sizes are kind of the same, proportions are around the same. So we ended up with icons that weren't too big or too small. I just didn't really make a theme to them. I just wanted to make cute goose drawings. But you can make them themed according to what icon you're making it for. So for example, if it's like a documents folder, make a cute little notebook document looking thing. If it's for photos, like a cute little camera or something, you can literally do anything. I would definitely recommend to make sure that your drawings are PNG with a transparent background. You can double check this just by opening your image. And as you can see, it's just on a blank background. 
Now go into the folder, you're gonna right click and press get info. And then it's as easy as just dragging your picture onto the folder until the plus sign appears. And just by dragging and dropping, you have your very own folder icon. And if you ever need to change it, it's just the same thing again. Right click, get info, drag the image you want on top of the existing folder icon, and then you're done. And once again, you can literally make the images anything. I had a crazy idea. Let's see if this works. <laughs> No way! Josh Hutcherson's on my computer! <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, this goes absolutely crazy. <laughs> Here are my collection of geese. So I'm pretty happy with this because we got that goose theme going strong. But I've also seen people like move their icons, especially if they're characters, onto their background. So it's like goose in a field. I'm just still used to having them kind of lined up nicely on the side. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can move your icons into your background so it fits the setting and just make it even cooler, I guess. <gasps> oh my god, no way that- Wait, what? I just caught that on camera. I don't think I've ever seen this shift, like, when I use it. Maybe like once or twice. Not enough that I've noticed it, but as you can see, dynamic wallpaper is changing into the sunset background. So there you have it. That's how you make a laptop background that changes depending on what time of day it is. And hopefully showing the process of how I created my background is a great way for you to start making your own. And now we also know how to change our folder icons so it's not the ugly little blue folder anymore. And there's something a lot more cuter and potentially themed. I feel like this whole video is just me talking like an infomercial. <laughs> but I'm just really excited to show you guys how exactly I made these because I'm really proud of them. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about that's a lot shorter than all the rest since it's not really a how-to, it's just me explaining, is the really good, efficient use of widgets. Now, widgets is definitely, I don't think, a foreign concept for most people, but I feel like widgets are really underrated. I find that they're really useful for anything that you use on your phone that you need to see, that you need a reminder of, that are really easy to forget. You use your phone for a lot of things. Texting, emailing, scrolling on TikTok or Instagram. You can use it for so many things. To the point where sometimes you forget about what apps you actually have on your phone and sometimes you just want to make sure not only do you remember most of the stuff but also you can see things that you kind of need a reminder of throughout the day for example i use widgets for my kind of daily mood journal and also my to-do list as well as the one second a day videos i do but for anyone else who does one second a day videos like tell me it's not so easy to forget to film something throughout your day especially when it gets to like the evening when you're about to go to bed and you're like, oh my God, I didn't film anything today. What am I supposed to film now? Like me in bed? Like, no, I had such an interesting day and I forgot to film any of it. So having a widget not only spaces out some of my apps, it also sections off my phone and gives me a big visual reminder that I still need to film my one second a day. Same thing with my daily mood journal. I'm actually so proud to say that since January 1st, I have not missed a single day. I think the widget helps a lot because it's again, a visual reminder of what I need to do. It's really easy to kind of click into the widget because it's really big and just do whatever I need to do to fill it out. It's also great for to-do lists or calendar widget just so you can visually see everything without, again, to even remember clicking into the app to check on your calendar to-do list. So having it out is kind of just having like a notepad out ready. I honestly think widgets are so underrated to the point where I actually don't know like all the uses for it. I bet there's probably better uses for widgets that even I haven't discovered. But if you haven't started using widgets on your phone yet, you definitely should. And for people who don't like to have lots of screens on their phone where you have to just keep swiping to go through everything, you can stack widgets and have it kind of cycle through as a carousel, which is really useful. And there's also, of course, the widgets on your phone lock screen, which is another visual reminder. You don't even have to unlock your phone to kind of see and get reminded of things. That you need to. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed learning about how to customize your laptop and phone, not only aesthetically, but creatively as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!